Welcome to Competency Based Anatomy. I am Dr. Rajita and today's topic is about brachial plexus. And let's start the brachial plexus with a case study where a newborn baby was brought to the hospital with the complaints as not able to move right upper leg. On examination, we found that the baby's hand was adapted towards the body and the wrist was flexed. This is a typical case where there is an injury to the lower part of the neck, nerves in the lower part of the neck. Ok, let's start. Let us start with the brachial plexus. plexus. To understand the anatomy of brachial plexus, we should know its origin, formation, course and branches of brachial plexus. Origin of brachial plexus, it gets origin from the spinal cord, cervical part. This is a cut section of the spinal cord showing the anterior horn, posterior horn. Anterior horn consists of motor nerves which gives rise to motor root. Posterior horn consists of sensory nerves which gives rise to sensory root. Sensory and motor root joins to form a mixed spinal nerve. And along with the sensory and motor root, there is a sympathetic nerves also which travel along with the anterior root. And these sympathetic nerves will end up in a ganglion that is the sympathetic ganglion and post-sympathetic fibers travel along the anterior and the posterior branches which are arising from the mixed spinal nerve. So the spinal nerve gives rise to anterior primary rami and posterior primary rami. So these anterior primary rami gives rise to brachial plexus. The anterior primary rami which are arising from the spinal nerves, they form the roots of brachial plexus. So the roots which are giving rise to brachial plexus are from the C5 level spinal segment C6, C7, C8 and T1. Suppose the C4 nerve root gives rise to brachial plexus then it is called prefixed plexus. If T2 gives the formation, contributes the formation of brachial plexus then it is called as post fixed plexus and these roots joins to form the trunks and trunks divides to form the divisions so when they are traveling they are tra crossed by the clavicle suppose my hand is the clavicle which divides the brachial plexus into preclavicular part retroclavicular part and infraclavicular part preclavicular part consists of roots and the trunks so upper trunk is formed by C5, C6 joints to form upper trunk of brachial plexus. C7 continues to form middle trunk of brachial plexus. C8, T1 joints to form lower trunk of brachial plexus. Now these trunks divides to form divisions. Each trunk has got two divisions. One is called dorsal, the other is the ventral. So upper trunk divides to form dorsal, ventral or will divide to form dorsal and ventral divisions. So the division formation is seen behind the clavicle that is retroclavicular part. Now coming to the infraclavicular part, these divisions joins to form cords of brachial plexus. All the dorsal divisions joins to form posterior cord of brachial plexus. And ventral division of the upper trunk, ventral division of the middle trunk joins to form lateral cord of brachial plexus. And ventral division of the lower trunk continues to form medial cord of brachial plexus. Next, we will move on to the branches of brachial plexus. Let's start from the roots. So branches from the roots, the C5 root, C6 root and C7 root gives branches, all of them join to form a nerve which is called as nerve to serratus anterior. Nerve to serratus anterior which is also called as long thoracic nerve or nerve of bell. This is the only nerve supplying serratus anterior muscle. C5 root sometimes gives contribution in the formation of phrenic nerve which is a muscle supplying the, which is the nerve supplying the diaphragm. And C5 nerves 
the nerve is called as dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve supplies three muscles rhomboids major minor and a twig is given to levator scapulae and c5 c6 c7 c8 also gives some muscular branches which are supplied in the skeletal muscles there are three skeletal muscles present in the anterior part of the neck skeletus anterior skeletus medius skeletus posterior and also a longus coli muscle which is present on the posterior side of the vertebra and let's see the branches of the trunk so the upper trunk alone gives branches no other trunk gives rise to branches upper trunk has got two branches the branch which is given to the upper side it is called as nerve to supraspinal nerve which supplies supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle and also it supplies to teres major also and a branch is given from the upper trunk lower down which is called as nerve to subclavius subclavius is a small muscle present below the clavicle and let's see the branches from the cords so these cords are named based on their relationship with second part of axillary artery so if my hand is the axillary artery lateral cord is present on the lateral side of the axillary artery medial cord is on the medial side of the axillary artery and posterior cord is on the posterior side of the axillary artery and let's see the branches of cords so the lateral cord gives rise to three branches to remember the branches of the lateral cord we can remember the mnemonic l m l l stands for lateral pectoral nerve and m stands for musculocutaneous nerve and again l stands for lateral root of median lateral pectoral nerve it is majorly supplies to pectoralis major muscle and sometimes a twig is given to pectoralis minor muscle also and musculocutaneous nerve is the nerve of anterior compartment of arm where it is supplying all the muscles in the anterior compartment of arm those are brachialis coraco brachialis and short and long head of biceps brachii and lateral root of median this is a nerve joins with the branch of medial cord of brachial plexus which is called medial root of median joins to form median nerve which is the nerve of anterior compartment of forearm supplying most of the muscles in the anterior compartment of forearm coming to the branches of the posterior cord of brachial plexus to remember the branches from the posterior cord of brachial plexus we can remember the abbreviation star s t a and r star s stands for subscapular nerve there are two subscapular nerves upper subscapular nerve and lower subscapular nerve they are meant to supply subscapularis muscle upper subscapular nerve supplies major part of subscapularis lower part of subscapularis is supplied by lower subscapular nerve t stands for thoraco dorsal nerve thoraco dorsal nerve is also called as nerve to latissimus dorsal supplying the latissimus dorsal or swimmer's muscle and a is the axillary nerve supplying deltoid and r is the radial nerve which is the thickest nerve of brachial plexus supplying posterior compartment of arm and posterior compartment of forearm branches from the medial cord of brachial plexus to remember the branches of the medial cord you can remember the mnemonic m for you there are four m's and one u the m stands for medial root of median which joins with the lateral root root to form the median nerve then medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of arm next medial cutaneous nerve of forearm
and medial pectoral nerve supplies to pectoralis minor muscle and also to pectoralis major muscle and the last nerve is the ulnar nerve which is the nerve of hand supplies most of the intrinsic muscles present in the hand so these are the branches of brachial plexus now we got to know the basic anatomy of brachial plexus we shall continue our next session on brachial plexus where we will discuss about the case and applied aspect of brachial plexus thank you hope you like my session please like share subscribe and anticipating for your valuable comments thank you